Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier and I uh, apologise for my absence on Friday. It was a bank uh, holiday here, Jumuri Day. Um, and uh, on, on uh, Monday when I was actually in um, uh, Dubai, I went there over the weekend. And you can just work uh, a much longer week because you fly up there and of course it op uh, it's the, they start their week on a Sunday. Very interesting visit. Uh, enjoyed myself. I'll put up some photographs. Um, I must say, my Note 4 is a marvel and takes these wonderful photographs. I'll put up one of Dubai in the afternoon um, and then I'll put up another one a bit later. But there's a lot of uh, activity in Dubai and the stock market, I was just going through that, has really fallen down dramatically. Um, if you haven't seen Frank Matzert's Mind Speak, please take a look. Unleashing the East African Lion. Um, very, very powerful presentation he made about East Africa and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to hosting the mercurial Aaron Rambui uh, at Mind Speak on Saturday. He is a fantastic uh, jazz musician, uh, pianist. Um, I went back to something I wrote on the 29th of September. There will be blood in the water, I wrote. And then I was uh, waiting for a meeting at the Ritz, uh, the DIFC, just off the DIFC, and uh, I was sitting down and in front of me was this um, installation of a fish, which looked as if it could smell blood in the water. Home Thoughts, the real Banksy who tweets all kinds of things, tweeted, be different, and have a look at this picture. That took me back to Apple. Here's to the crazy ones, the rebels, the troublemakers, the ones who see things differently. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius, because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. I woke up early this morning because when I got home yesterday, the youngest Hannah was asleep and said, look what I have for you. I bought one of those big lint chocolate boxes. And when I told my dad, he says, well, that was the name of the cafe yesterday. Um, so I am, I'll get to that also. And uh, Hannah says to me, you really shouldn't have. And I held her tight and wished my mum was alive because she would have enjoyed her granddaughter more than the world. The independent uh, caught my eye. Man, men who like spicier foods of higher levels of testosterone. The study entitled Some Like It Hot will be published in the Physiology and Behaviour Journal early next year. I love it hot, but my goodness, my stomach can't handle it anymore. Um, but uh, I do like it like that. That's interesting. Political reflections. The siege in Sydney has once again raised the spectre of attacks by lone wolves. This is in the Independent. And lone wolf attacks are surely asymmetric warfare in its most distilled form. And it took me back to something I wrote in September 2012 when I said, you know, there are plenty of flamethrowers in a world population of 7 billion. If you consider, um, uh, you know, let's say half a percent of people inclined to, to uh, non-regular behavioral patterns or extreme, I'm mean, talking about quite a few people. Uh, and took me back to Don DeLillo by Vince uh, in an interview with Vince Passaro. And I keep telling you about Don DeLillo, but he really writes about this kind of thing. I don't know if I agree with him, DeLillo remarks, but I do think we can connect novelists and terrorists here. In a repressive society, a writer can be deeply influential. But in a society that's filled with glut and repetition and endless consumption, the act of terror may be the only meaningful act. People who are in power make their arrangements in secret, largely as a way of maintaining and furthering that power. People who are powerless make an open theatre of violence. 
True terror is a language and a vision. There is a deep narrative structure to terrorist acts, and they infiltrate and alter consciousness in ways that writers used to aspire to. Um, I took one sentence from an article in the Asia Times, and, then, and that sentence says, Xi Jinping's haughty treatment of Barack Obama during the recent summit in Beijing. And you remember, I spoke about this, and it was very bizarre. And basically, Xi Jinping humiliated President Obama via body language at APEC. He had Obama practically approaching him like a subject, um, if you can see the video, I haven't seen, I haven't got it. Taliban have taken hundreds hostage at Pakistani military school, 18 dead. Taliban gunmen took hundreds of students hostage. Northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar on Tuesday, at least 18 people were killed, including 16 pupils. A Reuters journalist at the scene heard heavy gunfire from inside the school as soldiers surrounded it. Helicopters hovered overhead and ambulances ferried wounded children to hospital. The Lady Reading Hospital in Peshawar, a sprawling and volatile city not far from the Afghan border, said the hospital had received the bodies of at least 12 people and was treating 40, 40 wounded students and two male teachers. Many are in the Operation Theatre, now in critical condition, undergoing treatment, said hospital official Ijaz Khan. Provincial Health Minister Sharam Khan later told television that 18 people had died, including 16 students, a female teacher and a soldier. Apparently, some of them were writing their exams. It's awful, isn't it? My conclusions are that the Taliban are surging in Afghanistan and apparently now in Afghanistan, in Pakistan as well. Currency markets, Euro was trading above 124.54, dollar index 88.33, I wrote this in the morning and I think actually the Euro got, has gotten stronger. Japanese Yen 117.41, Swiss Franc 0.9642. Pound 156.50, Aussie 0.8224. India rupee 63.455, South Korean won 1088.12, Real 269.56, Egyptian pound 714.89, South African rand 1171.68. Dollar index, uh, although it's softening back towards the 88 level, there is a school of thought that the Fed might turn quite dovish because of this extraordinary stimulus coming out from the lower oil price. Um, taking inflation low and probably not putting them under as much pressure as they were to hike rates. But I think uh, that will be an opportunity to buy the dollar because that will further strengthen the U.S. economy. And the trick is here that at some point you get some data which is so compelling the Fed are forced to act. And I think, if anything, the lower oil price is going to make that data point closer. Euro dollar, uh, as I said, just above 124.54. I think that goes to parity in 2415. S&P rose 0.8% in the first 30 minutes of trading, then sank 1%, tracing a 36-point arc. That was the biggest for any day since mid-October. S&P 500 has fallen 4.1% from an all-time high on debt five. Commodity markets, you know, I said on the 13th of October, the conditions are optimal for a complete washout, a blow-off bottom, as far as $50 a barrel might hit, the, hit that level this week. Markets overshoot, crude oil does it big time. I put up a one-month chart last time, 54.54. The FT have got an infographic showing the winners and losers of the oil price plunge. Saudi Arabia risks instigating an oil war with Russia and Iran. Well, I thought that was a given. A war that the kingdom can perhaps win in the short term. But like sectarian conflict, Saudi actions threaten a conflagration that can spin out of everyone's control. I think that's not wrong. I'll put up a six-month chart of oil and you can see what a steep decline it's been. Gold back below 1,200. 1198.33. I still think it's going to a thousand in 2015. 
Russia defends the ruble with its biggest rate rise since 1998. Um, the Russian central bank said it would raise its key interest rate to 17% from 10.5%. The move was the largest single increase since 1998, when Russian rates soared past 100% and the government defaulted on its debt. Russia has spent $80 billion of its foreign exchange reserves in an unsuccessful attempt to prop up the ruble, which tumbled past 64 against the dollar for the first time yesterday. December 1, I said this is a very 21st century shock and awe, and a bullet has not even been fired. And I called it oil and currency warfare. Um, and I said Barack Obama, although he got creamed in the midterms, has been a very subtle skilled, hard-nosed exponent of currency, and now oil warfare. I said this plan to undercut oil was exquisitely constructed and executed. The Russian ruble has been crushed. The central bank has dropped a hundred billion dollars. Iran might have got an extension, but the new oil price normal keeps them on the ropes. Tehran Stock Exchange has lost 19% in 2014 first yearly decline since 2008, and over the previous five years, it soared 910%, but if you strip out the real, it's up 300% in dollar terms. Um, Iran hemmed in by Western presence as MK Badra Kuma, a little over a week since formalizing the establishment of a military base east of Suez in Bahrain, London has announced that British troops uh, uh, are returning to the region after a five-year interlude, um, saying that beyond a shadow of a doubt, the establishment of the British base in Bahrain and the deployment in Iraq emanate out of close coordination between London and Washington. An FD analysis pondered that Britain is stepping in so that the U.S. can pay more attention to its pivot strategy in Asia and talking about how this might play out, particularly with Iran and Gulf. And then in the Asia Times saying you know, Iran is poised on a slippery nuclear slope. In reality, the extension meant that Iranian negotiators had failed to achieve anything of substance in terms of sanctions relief. In exchange for the significant uni unilateral concessions they had made a year earlier, to put it differently, it meant that the U.S. and its allies refused to honor what they had promised Iran in return for its suspension and or downgrading of its nuclear technology. And as I said previously, brinkmanship does not favor Iran. The Dubai financial market, which was, I think, at one point the highest flying market in 2014, if I remember, I'll go and check is now down 38% through this morning. Put up an image of morning in Dubai. It's a very dramatic move. Someone on Twitter speculating that uh, this is ISIS money. Frontier markets being withdrawn from the market. But I think it's highly speculative. Frontier markets street children play outside the Karte Saki Mosque. They are paid by locals to clean gravestones and shrines in the nearby cemetery, like this photograph of Mayotte Island, the Union of Comoros. The photograph is by Sebastian Alami. Sub-Saharan Africa, a jobless Kenyan tweeted me, African bonds routed after issuance bonanza. Look at those moves. They've been completely plugged here. Huge sell-off. Ghana, above 10%. Oh, God. And clearly, comment I made about blood in the water was seen in this Eurobond move. Have a look at it. World's newest state, South Sudan, implodes in civil war. The leaders of South Sudan have allowed their personal ambitions to jeopardize the future of an entire nation, Ban said. The very premise of the country's independence struggle, a new beginning that was supposed to be founded on tolerance, good governance, accountability and unity, is disappearing before our eyes. Look at this, an estimated 400,000 children have been forced out of school. 12,000 are reported as being used by armed forces and groups in the conflict. 
Until today, nobody knows how many thousands have been killed. The war is so cruel that nobody has even indicated whether they hold prisoners of war. Kier spokesman Ateni Wek Ateni dismissed rebel demands that Kier resign as president and said the government, unlike the insurgents, is ready for peace. He just wants to remain president. He doesn't care about South Sudan. He doesn't care about people who are dead, who are still dying. This is Nyot. I think he's a representative of Mr. Machar. Put up a photograph of the South Sudan President Salva Kiir on the left, Tanzania's President Jakaya Kikwete in the center, and Rik Machar on the right, as his talks on October 20 in Arusha. I go back to that twit pic I posted when I was in Maputo when I took a photograph of the Africa Rising poster for that conference and I wrote, it's, but Africa is no longer rising in the right float all boats where it was in 2012 and 2013. South African all share down 3,114 points in four weeks by the way remains up 2.466% year to date dollar rand. I put that target of 12 out for 2015. We might hit it this year. Last trading 1171.79. Egyptian pound is, officially has remained at the 714.76 level for eternity, but on the black market there's been quite a lot of movement, in part I think because they replayed a Qatar loan of $2.5 billion, creating a shortage the Egyptian stock market, which had such a big sell-off yesterday, bounced 1.34% yesterday. It's up 13.227% yet to date. Nigerian all share, that's down now 26.221% year to date. Nigeria's 2023 bond yield climbed to 7.26%, the highest since it was issued last year. Its stock market is trading on par with Zimbabwe ratio of P ratio of 8.14 and as I wrote um, it is in the eye of a storm in my view. The Ghana stock exchange is up 7.459 percent. ERC oil firm should stop taking Kenyans for granted. The kind of map being put forward by the ERC simply doesn't add up. Global crude prices have declined by 40 percent in the past six months driven by oversupply over the same period, pump prices in Kenya have only fallen by 6.9 and 9.7%. And I wrote my piece over the weekend before I saw those prices that were released for December. And I said, I've not seen the new fuel price structure, which was set to be released on Sunday after I'd written my weekend piece. But barring any curveballs, I said, we are set to see super petrol sharply below 100 shillings point is, we got a curve for Kenya shilling 90.452, the Nairobi all share up 19.1072% year to date, but it's come off marginally off a record, and the NSC20 is up 3.654% uh, year to date. Once again, thank you for stopping by. I must say I'm looking forward to the holidays. I'm sure you are as well.